Hello and welcome to Spartan Football Weekly. I'm Justin Allegri. On tonight's show, we'll have Jimmy Durkin, the Spartans beat writer, in studio with us. We'll also preview the Hawaii game with San Jose State head coach Ron Carragher. But first, let's head back to the highlights against Utah State. San Jose State taking on Utah State in the Spartans' first Mountain West Conference game of the year. Another real big game for Chandler Jones. He was over 100 yards in the second straight game and really had some nice catches there. You see an adjustment type catch there and ended with seven receptions for 115 yards. So another very good performance for Chandler Jones. Spartans got six points from Austin Lopez in the first two attempts, but the story of the game that was kind of forgotten was his first miss of his college career. It was from 42 yards out and snapped a 23 consecutive Executive made streak but the miscues again for San Jose State were the story of the game 11 penalties for 108 yards and some really big turnovers here's the biggest one of the game from the two yard line a snap over the top of David Bale's heads head and uh, it was three interceptions also for San Jose State Jason Simpson ran in the only Spartans touchdown of the game it was from a yard out on third and goal his second touchdown of the season and the second Spartans rushing touchdown of the year Jabari Carr also had a very nice game before he ended the game being injured uh, he had a total of six catches overall on the night and also Keith Smith continuing to be a force on defense backed up his 21 tackle performance at Minnesota with 20 against Utah State and still leads the nation at close to 18 tackles per game but it was not enough as San Jose State falls to one and three on this season losing 40 to 12 to Utah State the final score We'll take our first break on the show tonight. When we come back, Jimmy Durkin, the Spartan beat writer, will join us in studio to talk about the season so far. More on Spartan Football Weekly when we return. It takes intense preparation, finesse, and precision to be crowned as the king in a unanimous decision. It bobs and it weaves around every corner. With its hit list of features, this car is a performer. So roll on to victory with the path of least resistance. The new 2014 Scion TC is made to go the distance. The Learfield Sports Directors Cup is the officially sanctioned annual award recognizing all around excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. NACTA and USA Today co-founded this esteemed honor in 1993, still widely recognized as the crowning achievement in college athletics. Welcome back to Spartan Football Weekly, now joined by Jimmy Durkin, who is a Spartans beat writer for the Bay Area News Group. And Jimmy, well, first of all, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Justin. So uh, tell us how you got into reporting for San Jose State Athletics. I know you were an alumni here. How did you get the job reporting on, on the football team that you love so much? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I covered the team back when I was in school here. Uh, you know, covered them for the Spartan Daily and also for the Oakland Tribune. I was working there part-time at the time. And, um, you know, eventually uh, you know, kind of took off for a little while from them and, and worked for a small newspaper down in Morgan Hill and eventually ended up back with the Bay Area News Group and you know, covering high school and, and eventually the uh, opening came up for San Jose State football. They asked me to do it and of course happy to do it. How many years have you been doing it now? This is my second season. Okay. And and what other sports do you cover? Do you, do you just do San Jose State or are you doing other things? You know, in basketball season I kind of bounce around do a little, you know, little Santa Clara, a little other college basketball, mm -hmm. high school basketball, you know, kind of kind of mix it up. It must be pretty fun though to cover your the school that you went to. Yeah, yeah, you know, it uh, you know, the, the year I was on the beat uh, for the Spartan Daily was, was Dick Tomey's first year. Uh, a okay. little bit of a rough season. They were 3-8 and eight that mm -hmm. year and, uh, uh, you know, went through a long losing streak, but they won their last two games. And, uh, and so, you know, last year was definitely fun to, to see them, you know, enjoying some success. Well, now you, you look at this season and you think, all right, well, they're 1-3. Uh, this three-game stretch, though, I know you and I have talked about this many times, it was a tough three-game stretch to start off their season. Obviously, Sacramento State, you get the victory, but then you went into those three games maybe hoping for one win, and you'd be fine with a two-and-two two record out of those three, but it's been a tough three-game stretch for them. Yeah, I mean, I think even 
if this team was playing really well, mm. one and three could have still happened. You know, that I think the, the thing that makes you a little bit nervous about what's going on so far this year is that they haven't really been competitive. They've been outscored by 22.7 mm-hmm. points per game in, in these three. And so, um, but, you know, it, it has been a tough stretch. I mean, Stanford, you had to chalk that up as a loss, no sure. matter how you slice it. That's a great team. They mm-hmm. may win a national title this year. you play your best against them, you still may lose, like we saw last year. Exactly. Minnesota, you know, we still don't know how good they are. They didn't do too well against Iowa this past weekend. Mm -hmm. And Utah State, it it may be the class of the Mountain West. So it's a very tough schedule. Now they enter a stretch that's a little more winnable. Um, You know, they have to start playing better, though, if they're going to get those wins in those games. How much of that playing, though, is is based upon the injuries that they've sustained? Because five players now, four were all whack players last year, uh, and and you lost Jabari Carr and Ben Aben Wickery. Don't know how long for those two yet, but how much do you feel like the injury bug hits this team. It, it's definitely hitting them because, you know, they've lost home run threats. Mm-hmm. Tyler Irvin is is not a guy that can be probably that every down back for you at running back, but he's a home run threat. Mm-hmm. He's a guy that can catch passes out of the backfield and go the distance. And we all know Noel Grigsby is maybe the best receiver that's ever played here. Yeah. So you, you can't discount that. And defensively, Vince Buhajer, uh, I, you know, as inexperienced as they are at outside linebacker right now in this new 3-4, having an all-whack first-team guy there at that position would be huge for them yeah. right now. And I think we're really seeing that with those injuries, they don't quite have the depth that they need to step up and, and have a deep team. When you talk about the depth, uh, one of those those players we saw a little bit of, Tyler Winston, and I know you're kind of high on him, and he's, he's going to be a good wide receiver for this team, but kind of have to see him early now because he has to step up because the Jabari Carr's out and, and Noel Grigsby's out. Yeah, and I, I, I've been high on him since I've seen him in, you know, in, in mm-hmm. fall camp. You know, he looked great in the scrimmage. And, you know, he, he's a guy that I think is going to end up being the number one receiver on this for this program in the next couple of years. And, you know, the fact that he's playing as a true freshman, in some ways, it, you know, you look at it as kind of a good thing. Yeah. You, you see the situation with Noel Grigsby. The reason he is unable to get a medical red shirt this year is because he used a red shirt during his mm-hmm. – true freshman year and once you do that you're unable to get a medical red shirt later and so the fact that a guy's playing as a true freshman hey if he can play if he's good enough yeah. I say get him out there and that way you have that opportunity down the road to use that medical red shirt. Now where does that affect who they're going to redshirt this season I know maybe he was a guy that they were thinking about redshirting but now that they have to use some of their depth it, it one eliminates some of that depth and then also kind of hampers who they can redshirt and who they can try and develop for later on. Yeah, and, you know, Coach Carragher even said that they absolutely wanted to redshirt him, and, and you know, they had to. Uh, they had to go ahead and play him. And, and so the, you know, you, what it does is it, it just it, it moves up his clock, and, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think it doesn't really affect who else they might redshirt. You know, they're, they're, they're guys like Thomas Tucker's another receiver that, um, you know, pretty high on it yeah. and he's he's still looking like he'll get a red shirt and they still have you know enough guys to fill those slots at wide receiver but you know Tyler was definitely a guy they wanted to red shirt because they would have liked to have him come in step in next year when they're really going to need receivers but I, I mean to me I like it because now next year when you're expecting a big role out of him he will have played for a mm-hmm. season mm-hmm. And, and when you look at also the other wide receivers Kyle Nunn he's had kind of a down year so far and made some mistakes some mental errors some physical errors uh, but they really need him, I think, at this point in the season. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, he was a guy coming into the season I was very high on. I, I yeah. you know, during practices, during scrimmages, he was this guy that, you know, he, he's the tallest of their receivers, and he was going out and making tons of plays during practice, and I thought he was poised for a mm-hmm. really good season. Mm-hmm. Some guys, they get under the bright lights, and it's just a little bit tougher for them. I still think he's got great potential. I still think he can have a big year if, if he puts it together. And, mm-hmm. you know, he... Even the, he, you know, he had a rough game against Utah State with three offensive pass interferences, but there were times where he was able to kind of shake that off and make some big catches. So I think he still has a chance to be a big guy for them, and at this point, he needs to be. All right, we'll take a quick break with the Spartans beat writer Jimmy Durkin. More on the program when we come back. Unamas. Come on, baby. Unamas. 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 We taste better for lunch or dinner.
Welcome back on Spartan Football Weekly. Still talking with Jimmy Durkin, the Spartans beat writer for the Mercury News. And, and Jimmy, uh, we continue to talk here. And one thing I think we kind of alluded to was maybe some of the execution on this team. We talked a little bit about Kyle Nunn. And uh, David Fales not really living up to the hype so far this season, uh, partially because there's been some drop passes. But in the red zone this year, uh, San Jose State three touchdowns out of 12 trips. And you asked today, is it, is it an execution thing or is it the play calling thing? And Coach Carragher said it was more of an execution. Uh, what is your take on it? Yeah, I mean, in, you know, in, in, to some degree, he's right. I mean, you cannot, a coach cannot force the guy to make a catch when he's about to walk into the end zone. <laughs> a coach can't tell a guy not to snap a ball yeah. over the quarterback's head. And so a lot of it is execution. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, a lot of people will say, well, why are you in shotgun on third and one right at the goal line? And, and so uh, I think it's, it's got to be a balance. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, I, I think because you see the play calling, the, the offense is working yeah. in between the 20s. They're getting down to the red zone. They're moving the ball a lot. But for whatever reason, once they get there, they're just not scoring. And so it, it's, it's, a, it's a balance of both. And, uh, you know, the coaches, the players, they all have to figure it out together. It's a very quick pace offense, too. A lot, of, a lot of touchdown drives within two minutes. And it's also David Fails. We've seen him throw now back-to-back -back games with two interceptions. That's something we just didn't expect this year. Yeah. I mean, he had nine interceptions all of last year. And, you know, he... He really, you know, he, he could have had a third interception. Mm -hmm. He uh, roughing the passer called one right. back here against uh, against Utah State, and you know, and even you, you, you know, he could be at this point be at six or you know seven interceptions mm -hmm. or so because against Sacramento State he should have had another one, but good old Noel Grigsby <laughs> saved him. Uh, <laughs> saved nice it, little catch. Yeah, saved saved him there. But you know, I, I think David, you know, he he hasn't quite got off to the start yeah. that he had last year. He hasn't had. You know, the first half against Minnesota was great. You know, he, he showed his potential mm -hmm. there, but he hasn't had a, a game where he sustained that. And a lot of that, you know, can be doesn't have all of his weapons out there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at some point, uh, you know, maybe as the competition goes down a little bit after these first three, these last three tough games, yeah. um, you know, I think eventually we're going to see him break out. And it could be against Hawaii because they're, they're a team that can give up some points. Well, now that's also something that the defense has had to struggle with because their quick pace offense is scoring – so fast that the defense is out there on the field. And I think it's really evident sometimes that they're just gassed when they get back out there. Uh, I, I don't think they're playing that bad on defense. No, and you know, the offense is ranked last in the Mountain West in mm -hmm. time of possession, a little over 23 minutes. Mm -hmm. And that's just not enough. I thought in the Utah State game, they gave their offense a chance to win the game. There was five drives in the, in the first half where Utah State moved into San Jose State territory and they held him to nine combined points on those mm -hmm. five drives. That is, that's good defense against a team as good as Utah State. Yep. And if you have an offense that's going out there and chewing up the clock for four, five minutes, moving down, getting a touchdown, mm -hmm. getting a field goal, stuff like that, then I think you're, you're saying, okay, hey, the, the defense is out there doing a good job. But because the offense is, is going three and out or when they are scoring, it's quick strike, the defense is getting – is on the field for too many plays. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're on the field for 37 minutes a game, and, and they just they can't keep up with that because they don't have the depth on mm -hmm. defense that they do on offense. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, guys get tired. Other guys have to come in, and all it all it takes is one big play, and other teams in the end zone. Well, I mean, one of the, one of the big players on defense is Keith Smith, and back to back games with over 20 tackles. Just just put that into perspective for some of the fans that maybe don't understand that that number is just not something that happens very often. I don't know if you've ever seen back to back games with 20 tackles or more, because I certainly haven't in, in the years that I've been watching Spartan football. No, and uh, you know, I I think Lawrence Fan did the, did some research. <laughs> I I don't I don't know that it's ever happened. I don't think it's ever happened here. It's um, yeah, and a lot of it, as, as Keith kind of alluded to after the game, is it's not necessarily a good thing mm -hmm. because, you know, you don't want one guy making so many tackles. You know, guys need to be rallying to the ball. Other guys need to be making plays. Now their defense is to a degree centered around, mm -hmm. you know, forcing the play into Keith. And so they do expect him to rack up a lot of tackles. But uh, what is he at, 71 through Jeez, four games? It's ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, y y you can tell that that guy's giving it all out, out there on the field. One final question for you. Of course, they head to Hawaii this week. What is your inside information on Hawaii? What do you think about that matchup? Well, you know, Hawaii, uh, it, they've had, a, you know, we talk about San Jose State's tough schedule. Hawaii's had a brutal right. one. I mean, they've, you know, they've already played Oregon State, USC, Utah State, and Nevada. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, you know, played two usually pretty tough Mountain West teams, two good Pac-12 teams. Uh, and, and so they, they're, they're 0-4, but they should be 0-4 playing mm -hmm. that schedule. They're, they're trying to figure out the quarterback situation. Looks like they may have, they, they you know, 34 unanswered points against Fresno State. That's enough to, to put a little scare into San Jose State because um, 
you know, if, if they've got their offense figured out, um, you know, with San Jose State struggles a little bit on defense, could turn into a shootout. And you, you got to hope that for San Jose State, um, if they get involved in the shootout, that their offense can get clicking enough yeah. to be able to win one of those games. All right, that's Jimmy Durkin, the Spartans beat writer. Thanks so much for coming on with us. All right, thanks, Justin. More on the program when we return. Sergio Romo, pitcher and two-time World Series champion, a Bay Area legend. E-40, platinum recording artist and actor, a Bay Area legend. Kinder's Barbecue, three generations of hard work and family pride. Award-winning barbecue, sauces, and meats. Kinder's Barbecue, a Bay Area legend. The Spartans are off to a one and three start this season, but as Angela Santoro of Get Sports Focus tells us, their future is still bright. The 2012 San Jose State Spartans finished the season at 10-2 and, and entered the spring with high expectations for the fall. However, something they did not expect would be the amount of injuries that would occur throughout their journey to and in the 2013 season. The challenging times, they really are, and, and uh, but again, uh, every challenge is an opportunity and, and uh, for this team to, to rally, to come together and, and transcend any uh, challenges that come our way and overcome and uh, I like our young players. Uh, we're trying to get as many reps so they get uh, experience in practice that they haven't had from a couple, from years, uh, you know, that you get as you're a veteran player. But we're bringing them along and, uh, uh, you know, you hope you don't go through many years uh, of, of the injury bug because it, it does uh, have its challenges. Amongst injuries being a challenge off the field, the coaching staff is focusing on some key areas on the field. Accountability is a big factor in the success of a program and over sustained time and uh, that's what we're demanding of our guys when you have accountability you have uh, good execution when you have good execution you have success when you have success you often win football games the spartans have kept their heads up and are ready to get a win in conference this weekend we got on the practice field yesterday it was nice to get out there sweat it out uh, see the guys running around shake it out of our system and uh, know that uh, you know, football is interesting and, and sports are interesting because uh, every week you have a chance to redefine and rebrand uh, yourself as you get out there. And Despite the injuries and losing their first game in the Mount West Conference, Coach Carriger remains optimistic. The only uh, way I know how to respond is roll up our sleeves and, and get to work. I want a team that's, that's positive, that's uh, upbeat, that has some confidence, uh, but will fight to the finish and never quit, never give up. And I told our coaching staff, just put 11 fighters out there, and uh, that's what I want. And I think for the most part, that's another thing. This, this team didn't quit. This team kept fighting. This team kept competing. The effort's there, and that's the important thing. The Spartans face the Rainbow Hine this Saturday, October 5th in Hawaii. The start time of that game is 9 o'clock Pacific time, and the Spartans will be looking to get a big win this weekend. Thanks, Angela. We'll take another break here on Spartan Football Weekly, and when we come back, we'll preview the Hawaii game with Ron Carriger. More on the show when we return. Welcome back to Spartan Football Weekly, now joined by San Jose State Head Coach Ron Carriger. And, and Coach, uh, kind of a, a bad way to start off this interview, but something we have to talk about. A couple of injuries in the game last week, and one was, was very violent, very scary to Bene Ben Wickery. What is his status and also the status of Jabari Carr? It, it, definitely right. It, it humbles you when you experience a, an injury of that magnitude of seeing a young man getting carted off on a stretcher, yeah. and it, it puts everything in perspective. And, and uh, just, I was proud of our team. I saw them just rally and, and say a prayer on the side. And I was down there with Benet and his grandmother came down. And it's just a very, uh, it's a tough situation, but uh, good news, he, he's doing well. It's uh, a concussion mm -hmm. is what happened. And uh, Benet is, is doing well. He's back in our athletic training room today. Uh, the headache, uh, he had a little one this morning, but he's getting away from those, mm -hmm. which is good news. So. Uh, I'm I'm excited to hear that I you know you, you your mind goes plays games with the magnitude of injuries that yeah. can happen and and you go down uh, the wrong road sometimes but I'm I, I feel good that he's on the right path and then what, what do you tell the team when, when you're in that long break he's sitting out there everybody's probably concerned what thinking the what if what if what right. could it be what, what are you oh, telling the guys you, you, you got to keep playing you got to keep competing because sometimes 
injuries come when you're not going full speed. Yeah. And so you got to go full speed, and really you give him what would Benet want you guys to do. He'd want nothing other than to play hard mm -hmm. and to get after it and play Spartan-style football. And so, uh, so feel good. Uh, he's going he's gonna to have on the road back. I'm not sure the timing of it. Uh, Jabari Carr, he um, dislocated his shoulder. So it, it came out, and uh, I'm, we're so blessed with an outstanding athletic training staff. Uh, Sash does a super job. Our team physicians were outstanding under under pressure in those moments uh, when uh, all eyes are on them. And, mm -hmm. and Sash just like a like a pro just got Jabari's arm back in socket. And now it's a matter of uh, we did a, a had an MRI yesterday to see if how much damage, if any, is done, and then we'll decide when he comes back. I certainly think there were some positives from the Utah State game. One of them, I think, was Tyler Winston got a little more playing time. You talk about. Jabari going down. Was that because Jabari's down, because Grigsby's down, or is that just because you're seeing some improvement out yeah, of Yeah, really with Noel going down, we started uh, Tyler Winston at Minnesota. Uh, mm -hmm. We didn't start him, but he, we started playing him, and he got nine snaps or so, mm -hmm. I, I would say. And then uh, in Friday's game against Utah State, he got 40 snaps. So yeah. those snaps went up uh, as we lost receivers. And we went from just in a position I felt really deep and experienced at to a young group sure. with, with uh, Tyler Winston and Tim Crawley, uh, two of our really top four receivers mm -hmm. right now are freshmen. Mm -hmm. and, and what have you seen from his progression? Do you like him? What you're I'm very encouraged. Uh, Tyler Winston ha had a great catch in there, and he's getting the game down. Uh, every snap he gets, he's gaining valuable experience. So I'm real excited. There's a lot of upside with him. He's a, he's a good size receiver. He's athletic. He quick, he's quick, and he does some good things with the ball in his hands. Another positive was that Jason Simpson and, and the running game had a, had a pretty good game against a tough defense. You know, Utah State with a pretty good run defense, but you went over 100 yards against them. Yeah, it was an improved performance in our run game and, and would have been even better with the, off the snap, the <laughs> minus 25 yard team rush there down on the one yard line. That's another story, but uh, it, was, uh, it was improved in that area. And so we need to continue that. We don't want to be a one dimensional team. We want to have a, an effective run game. And one thing you, you were trying to work on uh, was the tackling. And I thought even, even in a game where you lost, the tackling was much, much better. And, and led yes. by Keith Smith, obviously, who's the best tackler in the nation, but right. much better tackling this yeah, week. Yeah, definitely. We didn't see the thud up. We saw guys come down and, and take the ball carrier out. And I agree. I addressed it yesterday with the team. Much improved in the tackling area. And, and that's a key fundamental of football. Now, another thing is there was 180 plays in that game. And mm -hmm. Fresno State, Hawaii had a lot, of game, a lot of plays in their game, over 170. Is that just because you're seeing it out of the Mountain West with a lot of plays? I know... Maybe with the 40-second play clock, you think maybe if we get 70 plays in a game, we're right. doing the right thing, but right. we're seeing more and more now. It's the up-tempo, no-huddle yeah. offenses that's doing it, and uh, it's a lot more plays. We as a, a staff talk about our depth we have at positions. Can we hold up we're running 80, 90 plays during a game? Used to be I mean, 15, 20 years ago, it, the average was 65, 70, yeah. maybe 72 plays. Now you're seeing another 15 plays a game because of the up-tempo offenses. We'll take a quick break with Coach Carragher and we'll preview the Hawaii game when we come back to Spartans Football Weekly. Uruma! <sighs> Uruma's. Let's go, Uruma's! Uruma's. Uruma's. We taste better for lunch or dinner. Welcome back on the program. Still here with San Jose State head coach Ron Carragher. And coach, uh, you preview for a game this week where it's your third consecutive week with a third consecutive mm -hmm. different time uh, sure, zone. Uh, sure, it's, it's, yeah. it's one of those difficult things that yeah. in the schedule. But uh, looking forward toward Hawaii, it's a team that is kind of inconsistent with their quarterback play. Yeah, they've had three quarterbacks play in, in the first four games. But I'll tell you what, Justin, I think the second half of the Fresno State yeah. game, they might have found someone. Uh, they got in rhythm. They were down substantially. Uh, I want to say is. 42 to 
13 or so, and they came roaring back. Mm -hmm. And, and it, final score 42 37 with uh, Hawaii having the football, taking a shot in the end zone to win the game. So uh, Schrader, Sean Schrader came in uh, and did a nice job moving the ball, being productive, creating points. He found the receivers and, and did a good job uh, exploiting a really good Fresno State secondary. And that's something that's going to build momentum for them coming to this game, right? Definitely. Confidence. You need that. You need to feel the ball being moved. You need to feel touchdowns. And, and that's something they got a little rhythm. So I would expect to see him play mm -hmm. in the game, although they have two other guys who at times have shown to be good quarterbacks, effective quarterbacks, all different styles. Does that make your preparation for the game that much different? How, how different are these quarterbacks? It does. One's, one's a, a run runner, uh, very good with the ball in his hands, an option guy. He can throw when he needs to, but he's very athletic. Uh, and then you got Schrader, who's your pocket passer. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you got another guy who's a balance of the two. So it really, you got you to plan for everything, not knowing necessarily who's going to be the quarterback. We've talked about the tough stretch San Jose State had with Stanford, Minnesota, and then Utah State. But this is a Hawaii team that played Oregon State, USC, Fresno, and Nevada. So that's a pretty tough schedule for them, too, to start off the season. Yes, we're both in uh, similar boats. Uh, we've played uh, some tough, challenging games uh, and, and, uh, and haven't had the desired end results and outcome of those games. Um, so we're excited to go back and play them. I'm sure they anticipated a better season thus far. <laughs> we anticipated a better record. But that's what football is. You, you, sometimes it happens and, and you've got to bounce back. You've got to, you've got to uh, gather around one another. You've got to get better, improve in the fundamentals, and then take off from there. When you look at them defensively, they, it seems like they make a lot of aggressive style plays. And sometimes it comes back to hurt them. But uh, is that their their mo on on defense? That's just aggression. They do. They have a. It, they're listed as a four three this week, but I've seen them play a lot of odd front, a three four mm -hmm. front. Uh, so they mix things up. Their linebackers blitz well. They play a lot of man coverage to free up an extra linebacker to come. So they want to put some pressure on the quarterback, and we've definitely got to be prepared to protect David. And you talked, I know, in your press conference about some of their safeties, and that's maybe the strength of their defense. I would say number thirty three is an outstanding ball player. He's a three year starter. He's all over the field making plays. But they're just good, solid all across the board, particularly their front seven. I'm impressed by those guys. And then we talked about the uh, the quarterbacks on offense, but the wide receiving core, kind of a young group. Uh, and and mm -hmm. with that inconsistency with quarterback, you don't really know what to expect from them. Right. It is a young group, but talented group. There's some guys that make some big plays in that third and fourth quarter in the Fresno game that that just eye catching like we got we got to do a good job covering mm -hmm. him or he stands out and this guy's got great speed you see it show up so we just have to do a good job of of containing those guys and 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 covering down and and uh, being to and putting a good pass rush on the quarterback so he's not comfortable in the pocket finding the open receivers for San Jose State with with the the losses and and some of the injuries is there much of a sense of urgency to win this game and go out there and get a victory you know every game is so important but yeah in this particular situation you just have the feel of its conference you're going to make your move yeah. you got it if you can do it you got to do it now and and our team knows that they understand that uh, the time is now to come, but, but truth be known, every game is important mm -hmm. and uh, from day one on. And so our guys will prepare. They're excited about it. Uh, I think uh, we had a good practice yesterday. We came out and uh, kind of just had a good sweat, got it out of our system, and, and the guys are excited and ready to move forward, and they see the opportunity is still there to have a great season. All right, that's San Jose State head coach Ron Carriger. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Appreciate it. More on the program when we come back. The Learfield Sports Directors Cup is the officially sanctioned annual award recognizing all-around excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. NACTA and USA Today co-founded this esteemed honor in 1993, still widely recognized as the crowning achievement in college athletics. Did you know that Sarah Winchester had a crew of carpenters building 24 hours a day for 38 years? It's true. Her mansion grew to 160 rooms during continuous construction from 1884 to 1922. And she didn't have to worry about building permits. Come and see their beautiful but bizarre handiwork. Guided tours daily at the world famous Winchester Mystery House San Jose. Minutes away, ages apart. That's it for this week's show. Again, San Jose State takes on Hawaii in their second Mountain West Conference game of the season. That's a 9 o'clock Pacific kickoff time, 6 o'clock Hawaiian. Coverage on 1590 AM KLIV will begin at 830 with the pregame show Pacific time. Thanks for watching Spartan Football Weekly. We'll see you next week.